Hey guys, Happy New Year. One thing I've been doing recently was getting more into reading this past year, and I just thought it would be fun to go through some ideas I got in various books. I'm going to be focusing on the main book that really impacted my life, but I also want to go through some honorable mentions and maybe we'll dive deeper in coming videos. So this is the first book. This is An Elegant Puzzle, Systems of Engineering Management by Will Larson. And if you notice this logo right here, this is from Stripe Press. So Stripe Press, I didn't know it existed, but I went to Stripe Sessions, I think a year ago, and I was talking to, they were handing out books. And I was like, this is interesting. I went to a tech conference and they're handing out books and I've never seen that before. So then I started talking to some of the people there and they were saying, oh yeah, we have a publishing house at Stripe. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that was a thing. It was just like a two person division when I last talked to them, but they do curate books. They hand curate books and I don't know if they publish books or not. I'm, I forgot that, but Anyway, so this is the book, An Elegant Puzzle. Uh, in this book, is really interesting. I, I started reading it uh, this year. I'll go on walks in the park and just try cracking open this book and talks about a variety of topics such as technical debt and things that you would see in an organization from many years of experience, but just like, composing this, distilling all of this information down into one book. Um, it's been a while since I read this book, honestly, but there are some really cool diagrams. Stay tuned in the future, and I might write some more blog posts about this book, but it, this book is so cool for engineering management and just learning the specificity it has for technical debt, or it was like, how many GitHub pull requests are being merged in. And one topic that was really interesting was how technical debt builds up or reduces. And that's kind of the main indicator if your team is ahead or behind, if you should be hiring. He was also talking about if someone gets onboarded, it reduces the productivity for a while. And he really formalized these statistics and numbers to back his points and it's really cool uh anyone who's trying to lead an engineering team it's a really good book to read this next book here is on competition by michael porter and this is really interesting my dad always used to talk to me about porter's five forces so barriers to entry threats of substitutes from the suppliers as substitutes to the sellers and things of like that. Just remembering those concepts every single time you're analyzing a business, how easy it is to replicate, what's the defensibility of this business? And th there's awesome, so this book is just a compilation of a bunch of uh, Harvard Business Review articles scrap pushed into one book. I actually got this at a book sale at my local library, so shout out to them uh, for $2. So. Oh, it's an interesting book. Hey guys, so this is Designing Data Intensive Applications by Martin Kleppman. And he really focuses on system design for these highly data intensive applications, which is every, like a lot of applications nowadays. There's so much data going through these systems and trying to design them in a way where user, a lot of users are there and you're handling a lot of traffic. So he compiles all these different systems methodology into one book and just thinking like that and learning this really awesome systems terminology can be applied into your coding and from a more architectural perspective. I've been going through a couple pages here and there and just constantly just working through 
working my way through this book and I'm constructing different blog posts on different points that I see are relevant and you feel free to check them out. I made two already. The book is titled Experience Economy and underneath that it says, every business is a stage. This book really talks about the transition from customer service to customer experience or CX for short. In this AI revolution, businesses will increasingly generate personalized content and it's more accessible and easier to do than ever before. This tremendous value for personalizing experiences. This book goes through various case studies and two that come to mind are Ritz Carlton and also Universal Studios and just learning how these big companies design personalized experiences for various people. I highly recommend this book. Please check this out. And this is a really awesome material here. Please look out. This book is titled Execution, The Discipline of Getting Things Done. This book is a classic as you can learn things from a more macro scale and just learning about how things get executed in a bigger office environment, learning in like American corporate culture and goes back to the roots. I found this book in the library in the business section and it was an interesting book. I didn't read all of it, but just learning a few concepts are pretty interesting in this book. This book here is called Bitwise. Bitwise, A Life in Code by David R. Back. And this book was a really interesting read. The main reason I love this book was in the beginning, he was talking about how he first got into coding. Um, he was talking about this program called Turtle. It was this program that allowed you to draw with code. And I remember my first couple experiences with coding. There, there was also like this thing called Khan Academy and they had a coding module which allowed you to draw and also just different coding languages for beginners. A lot of the first beginning code stuff was drawing on a GUI. This book is really fun to read as it just triggered some fun feelings when I first started learning how to code. And this, I highly recommend this book. So please check it out. This book is my favorite book of the year and the most impactful book in my life. Digital minimalism is about how to extract the most value out of technology without technology extracting value out of you. There's a lot of value to be gained from technology, but as we see in um, documentaries such as Social Network, companies are learning how to extract a lot of attention out of you. Social Network was a documentary about how companies gather a lot of data for a person, make a customer 360, of what that person was and make a really tight persona and then sell that data to, and sell that data to advertisers to make more money. Well, well, I learned about how the process works and things like that. It didn't really help me reduce my usage of technology. It just made me aware of what was happening. Digital minimalism was different. It recommended an action plan. Cal Newport, a Georgetown computer science professor, calls for a digital detox. Digital detox is eliminating all inessential technologies, such as social media, anything that's not bringing you true value out of your life. After 30 days, you reevaluate each technology that you want to bring back into your life. While I may have not adhered to the principles super well, I do my best to follow the principles laid out in this book. There are whole communities dedicated to digital minimalism, such as r slash digital minimalism on Reddit, 
which is kind of interesting because Reddit's kind of a time-wasting technology. But that's interesting. And you can communicate with people about this and different light hacks. There are a lot of points that he makes in this book, and I'm going to go into different in depth into different topics in this book. And I already have made one blog post called Colorless. This book really reminded me what it meant to be a HCI researcher, as I used to do research in my university. During my research, I learned how to build UIs and compare and contrast different UIs and figure out what is the best for the users, making it seamless and easy. Iterating on UIs to become better and better. A lot of Cal Newport is saying extracting the most value you can out of technology. And sometimes that calls for changing your interface to extract the most value out of it instead of it extracting value out of you. And one of the concepts I like is going grayscale, uh, making my phone grayscale because the user interface was iterated a lot of times to make the most addictive colors, for, such as red for your notifications. And as I went grayscale, a lot of things changed in my mind and it was easier to become less addicted to technology. It was easier for me to follow and made me less addicted to technology. So that was my favorite book of the year. Thank you so much for watching, guys. This is my blog post. Feel free to check it out. And I hope to see you in the next year. Maybe do another one of these next year and check out my blog. I might write different things on different books that were covered in this YouTube video.